back with you. Um, so so encouraged to be here tonight. I thought we could start off with a word of prayer. Amen? Amen. Father God, we come before you tonight to uh, humble Father to know that we can even enter into your sanctuary right now. Uh, humble God that you make the time to want to hear our prayers. Yes. God, when I think about the fact that you truly do stoop down to make us great, it, it just it blows my mind, Father, that you, you want to have a relationship with us. That this is not something that is a ritual for us. This is really a relationship. Um, I pray that it's so, it's, so, it's so good to see everyone here tonight. So good to have our first congregational meeting of the year. Um, but God, we just pray that this year will be a year of victory. A year of overcoming the shortcomings and the failures that plagued us in 2013. A year, God, where we'll be able to give our best for you. A year where we'll see even more miracles, more highlights. God, I can't wait to see all that you're going to do this year. Yes, Lord. But God, I know it starts first That's right. with us relying on you and not ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. God, I pray that this year can be a year we focus not on our own efforts, but on your power. Yeah. God, I pray that this is a year where we really walk by faith and not by sight. A year, God, where we've learned our lessons that our, our strength is so meager that we cannot evangelize the nations without you. We cannot raise the funds to do it without you. We cannot help restore our friends without you. We can't help baptize anyone without you. That yeah. without you, God, we can do nothing. Amen. But we can do all things through you, yes. who yes. gives us the strength. Yes. And so this, tonight, God, I just pray that uh, I'll be able to share my heart just about the workshops to inspire the saints here. And, God, I pray our guests see not just a family, but truly uh, an army of the Lord, Amen. ready to be able to literally attack the gates of hell itself yes. cool. and pull back as many friends as we can Amen. who are on their way there. We love you and pray all this in your son's precious name. Amen. Yeah. Well, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, those of you who don't know, my name is Andrew Smiley. I have the privilege of uh, leading the church here in New York. My, uh, my beautiful wife and I just came back from Los Angeles for basically the winter workshops for our movement. And uh, the theme of the winter workshops there was called A House of Prayer for All Nations. Okay. And it's based on Mark chapter 11, verse 17, where it says, Jesus said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? And that really is. A scripture that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees because he sees them, the money changes in the temple and all this stuff going on. And long story short, he's reminding them of the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 7, where basically people are kind of trusting the fact that they were like, well, we go to church, we do this, we're all good. But sadly, they, their hearts weren't really there. And so as a result, they had like a sense of pretense. And they weren't really sold out to the Lord. And so it, it was an incredible weekend. We had folks from all over the world preaching and sharing. I mean, it, it was incredible. And we have prayer goals for 2014. Um, and so our theme for the Northeast is the hope of all nations. And uh, we're going we're to be able to kind of, we're going to have a bolt in ourselves. It's going to be pretty awesome working with it. I'm Robin, with Robin Akia right now. And, uh, actually kind of taking these goals and making sure that we're all on the same page um, as our church and with our movement around the world. Um, I wanted to share with you, I had, I had the privilege to be able to stay a little longer, and uh, our brother Kip asked me to preach for the entire staff of the LA Church and all the visiting uh, ministers as well. And um, I, since the whole theme of the conference was prayer, I wanted to share a lesson with you that I did um, that's simply entitled, Discipline That Comes From Devotion. Wow. Come on. Discipline that comes from devotion. Come on, bro. You know, um, I remember when I was uh, getting ready uh, to get married. And I remember uh, just thinking to myself, man, you know what? I'm about to get married soon. And I was like, boy, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. I'm going to be disciplined. And I'm going to be serious. I'm going to be focused. You know, I just want to encourage my, you know, my soon-to-be wife. And, you know, it's not easy to get up early in the morning. It's not easy to work out. It's not easy to work. But why do we do it? Why does a guy like that do it? Because he's devoted to this person, and as a result, he is disciplined right. mm. out of devotion. Yeah. And I think in a lot of ways, our relationship with God sometimes can be disciplined without devotion. Right. Mm. 
Sometimes we kind of just go through the ritual of getting up early, spending time reading the Bible, but not really spending time with God. Yeah, right. And so it becomes a ritual and not a relationship. Come on, girl. Or we share our faith, not because we really want to help our friends to get to know our dad, but because we think someone's going to ask us about whether we shared our faith today. <laughs> and so it, it stops being about a relationship, and it starts being more of a ritual that, sadly, will eventually lead to bitterness and, to be honest with you, uh, a life that's more of a burden than a joy. Come on, yeah. See, I don't know about you here tonight, but for me, being a disciple is a joy. Come on. Being a disciple is something I love to do. Come on. I, it, 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 it wouldn't matter whether, um, you know, all the prayers I ask for answer or not. I just know that my salvation, I, that's all I need. To know that God would want to save my wretchedness. You know what? I'm grateful for that alone. I think sometimes we, we wouldn't want to be a disciple unless God answers our prayers. If God doesn't answer our prayers, then we don't want to be a disciple anymore. Because we don't get anything out of it. And so we got to really check our own hearts here. Take a look at Psalm 63. I think all of us understand the importance of prayer. We've done uh, prayer campaigns even here in the church, like Light the Fire and all those different things. Um, but I think sometimes we understand the importance of prayer, but we don't understand the impact prayer really has. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the brothers who spoke, Blaise Fumba, talked about how if you have a chance, then there were some amazing messages. Just go over to the City Manual's website. It was incredible. Kids is today. But to understand that we are in a spiritual war. And that if you're not praying, it's like you're going outside without a weapon. Yeah. And then you're sharing your faith, and you say, hey, I'm a Christian, but you haven't had a quiet time, you haven't prayed. And it's like, imagine like telling someone you're a soldier, and you have no gun. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to kill you. And so we go out saying, I'm going to do all this stuff, but, but you're not prepared. And so here in Psalm 63, you know, this was a scripture that really moved my heart. Um, because just to be real and honest with you guys, I've been tempted um, to really not appreciate prayer in my life the way I need to. Um, you know, for most people, you're either more of a Bible person or more of a prayer person. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can relate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I tend to be more of a Bible person. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have to, like, force myself to pray. You know why? Because I'm independent. Yeah. Because I'm prideful. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's who I am. I, I tend to be self-reliant. I don't tend to be dependent on other people. I don't even tend to be dependent on God. But that's sin. Yes. Yeah. And so, very often, I'm tempted to go on my own efforts. Right now, now God has obviously humbled me over the years. Of course, I've learned that lesson. Yeah. But every so often, I have to remind myself, hey, hold on a second, I need to pray. Yeah. Before I go out and try to do stuff. Because in our comms, like, we can do it. No, God can do it through us. Yeah. Take a look at Psalm 63 here. Come on, bro. Psalm 63, the Bible says here, verse 1. Oh, God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. Okay, stop right there. I've ever worked out hard. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Like hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was and you're like super thirsty. Yeah. Oh, right? And you get that water, and all of a sudden the water that you're like, eh, we well, bored. Now when you're thirsty, it's like it's like a nectar of the Lord. Okay? Or you drink your beer or whatever. And let me tell you, you gotta ask yourself, is that the way you feel about your time with God? Is that honestly the way you feel? I mean, let's be honest. Very often, you don't. Well, it goes on here. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. When's the last time you can say, wow, I've seen the glory of God? Now, of course, everything that we see is created by God. It isn't God, right? We don't believe in that nonsense. But what's interesting about it is that when, we're, when I was in L.A., I was actually preaching at this Doc Weiler Youth Center, and behind me is like the Pacific Ocean. Wow. And there's a beautiful beach, and it's like gorgeous. It's pretty, nice. it's pretty easy to like see God in California. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I was kind of, kind of making a joke about how like you know these guys have the Pacific Ocean, we have like the Hudson River. But, <laughs> and so I was like, guys, you have no excuse. 
excuse. You know? But the truth of it is, no, we have beautiful sights here in New York. Where we can just admire the glory of God. Doesn't the Bible say the heavens declare the glory of God? When was the last time you just went out? I remember taking the teens out when I was in team ministry back in the day. And we would just go out and we'd learn about astronomy by just looking at the stars. Oh, yeah. And look at the constellations, look at the stars in the show. It's like, that is our God. You think, oh, that's an accident right there? See that little Big Dipper? Yeah, that's just an accident too? And I remember the teens just went, wow, this is incredible. When's the last time you just stood in awe of who God is? Astronomy is pretty cool. The other one said it's out. I mean, it's like, man. It goes on in verse 3. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Well, when's the last time you meditated on that? I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Come on. You know, sometimes we talk about lifting up my hands. Right? You know, people look at it as, well, is he getting Pentecostal on us here? Raise your hands. I think sometimes we get, like, we can swing the pendulum. You know, we think, oh, that's over religious, so I'm going to swing the pendulum to being, like, super conservative. No, I mean, raising up your hands in prayer, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, you feel closer to God when you do. It's kind of like when you kneel down and you put your, knee, your knees on the floor and you, you, your body's posturate. Like, it does something to you yeah. when you kneel down to pray. Yeah. Like, your body connects with your mind. Yeah. It says here, my soul will be satisfied with the riches of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Wow. You know, the other day I was in L.A. and, um, you know, we were uh, staying at this place called the Shelter Hotel. It's kind of funny because it's called the Shelter Hotel. Uh, it's just kind of a day's end that was gutted and they made it into a boutique hotel. It's, you know, it's cheaper than where the conference was at in Sheridan, so we were grateful. Um, it's cool. And so, but you know, I went out to pray. Um, I just went out for a prayer walk. And I just had a lot of stuff in my heart. You ever go out to pray? You just, oh, yeah. you just don't know what to pray. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you're like, you're trying to pray, but you don't know what to say. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, Drew. I'm like, I'm a minister for crown. I've been a disciple for almost 14 years. Like, but sometimes you just don't know yeah. what to yeah. say. Yeah. Like, you can go through the whole act you can go, but your just heart is just like heavy. Like, I had all this stuff in my heart. I'm like, okay, well, golly, I'm thinking about the church. I'm thinking about kids. I'm thinking about Africa. Oh my gosh, I'm going to Africa soon. Hello. <laughs> Who the heck am I to go to Africa and oversee all this work there? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about just the people who are struggling. I think about my sister. I think about my dad. I think about all this stuff. And I just, I just stopped. And I just started to sing. Amen. And um, and so there's a song that I mean I learned back in Syracuse. It goes, um, actually I'll do it with you, okay? Yeah. But you gotta close your eyes. Okay. Okay. It goes like this. You see, it's like a call and response. It goes like this, right? Father. Would you still pray to God? 
Do, do you pray to God because you just want to be close to your father? The father that gave you salvation, the father that walks with you, your dad? Or are you always just praying because you want something? Imagine having a friend where the only time you talk to him is when you want something. Hey, how you doing? Great. Can I have this? Oh, yeah, you're awesome. Oh, by the way, I need this. That's not much of a relationship, is it? How's your prayer life? Are you close to God because you just want to be devoted to him? And that's really the first point. Prayer takes devotion. You look at the, the psalm here, and David, as he's in the desert of Judea, of Judah, rather, he says, my soul be satisfied. He's in the desert for crying out loud. He says, my soul be satisfied with the riches of foods. Where are the riches of foods? He's in the desert. But he sings to God and praising God. On verse, verse 6, it says, on my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. That makes me think of that song. My help. All of my help coming from the Lord. You know that song? Yeah. yeah. There's some songs, right? Yeah. There's some songs. We gotta get some songs up in here. But I mean, when is the last time you just sang? You know, we have this song book full of all these pages. Yeah. I wanna challenge you guys. You need to go to the book table Amen. and go buy a song book oh, that you have for yourself and learn the songs. You can even go online to there's like websites that can teach you the songs. Yeah. Teach you different parts. Yeah. Talk to Jonathan, he's got it. All right. But I think, you know, it's interesting because when we worship together, we spend about a third, a third of the time of the worship singing. Yeah. You ever notice that? Yeah. Yeah. So we only sing on Sundays and not during the week? Oh. Come on, bro. And don't say, well, I can't sing. <laughs> the Bible says, make a joyful noise. When we just sang that song, oh you guys God. sounded pretty good to me. Yeah. So if you're going, you know what? If you're singing with all your heart, our God is smiling. <laughs> he will hook you up now. Um, and so I share this with you guys because. You see here that David had a very intimate and passionate relationship with his God. Yes. And as we start off the new year, I think we gotta really focus on this. Yes. Discipline that comes from devotion. Mm -hmm. How devoted are you to God? Because if you're not devoted to your relationship with God, there's not, you really won't be able to be devoted to his kingdom, yeah. much less be devoted to saving souls. Come on, bro. Are you with me here? Yeah. That, that's where it starts. And so, I made some decisions. Um, I've decided to repent. And I decided to stop being foolish and prideful and really become a man that relies less on human effort and more on the power of God. Because when you're really devoted to God, it brings you peace. Um, I've decided to make prayer not a part of my life that I fit in, but really the thing that guides my life. And I've decided to pray not just for the benefit of my life, my ministry, or my mission, which is all important, but I'm, I try to pray because I really want to be close to God. Because I think very often we pray for our life, our ministry, or the people we're sending about with. Instead of saying, do I just pray because I want to be close to God? And I'm getting nothing out of it. Would you pray if God wasn't necessarily going to answer all your prayers. And so, you know, I look at this and I just realized that was what devotion is all about. And so, when you're devoted to God, you have peace. Take a look at Philippians chapter 4. Come on, bro. You know, I don't know how you are tonight. I thought the singing was awesome tonight. The fellowship is incredible. It's nothing like, you know, being away for a little bit because of the holidays. That it makes you realize how grateful, how grateful we need to be for this time. Um, but here in Philippians chapter 4, let's take a look here at what it says about our devotion to God through prayer. It says here, Philippians 4 4, rejoice in the Lord when everything's going well. No, no, no that's not correct. Right? Is that what it says? Remember, it says to need to be a rejoice in the Lord when you feel like your prayers are.
are being answered. No. no. Acts 17, 10. No, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. How are you doing tonight? Oh my God. Rejoice in the Lord. So we know, I can, you know, you know what the amazing thing is? The eyes are the window. Oh. The eyes are the window. When you're not doing well, you can see it. Now I'm not sitting here looking at it. <laughs> Things in my eye. <laughs> no, that's all I said. But you know, you can tell. Are you happy? Because remember, no, I should, I'm, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Are you, are you joyful? Because happiness is an emotion. Joy is a decision. You with me here? Um, and it says, I will say it again, just because you probably didn't really get it the first time. Rejoice. Verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. See, when you are joyful, you're gentle. You ever notice people are on edge? <laughs> people who are on edge like that, there's something wrong. There's not a joy, there's not a peace. And it says here, let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. See, if God was, if God was like, boom, you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, you're walking down, a, you know, like a, a dark alley, but God's right next to you, like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not scared. You're not worried. Right? The Lord is near. Verse 6, now here it is. Let's see if this is a suggestion. Do not be anxious oh, man, about anything. Oh, man. Tell the scripture. <laughs> Except when your bills are piling up. <laughs> Except when you want to be in a relationship and they haven't asked you or you oh! not sure. Except when, you know, your job's got issues. Except when you're in that discipling time and they really don't want to repent. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition. You, I mean, you're, 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 you're petition, like, you know when people go around signing petitions? You're like, you're trying to get as many people to sign this bad boy as possible. Which means that you're praying, but you keep saying the same to God, and we just keep going after it. Sometimes we talk about so many things, we forget. Yeah. Pray about one thing a lot. <laughs> pray every petition with thanksgiving, because you got to pray as if you've already received it. Yeah. God, thank you that we're going to blow out our 20 pounds missions this year. <laughs> thank you, Father, that this winter workshop is going to be the most incredible winter workshop we've ever had. Present your request to God in that way, Matthew and the peace 25. of God that transcends all our sinful understanding, you with me here, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, the reason why it's tough for us to pray is because our minds and our hearts are corrupted. We're not at peace. We're not joyful. We've allowed the world to just kind of steal our faith and our hope. Yeah. And so our prayers aren't filled with faith. God, yeah, I know I prayed this last week, but um, yeah, I really hope that this guy will make it. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. There's no faith. There's no expectation. You with me here, guys? Yeah. yeah. And so that's what devotion is all about. I, I just want to encourage you, like, let's get deeper in our walk with God. Let, let's, let's understand what deep devotion is about. Because here's the thing. If you can't be devoted to a God who is perfect, how can you possibly be devoted to somebody else? That's why I never forget his brother saying, I don't respect a dude until he's married. Because you learn what it means to be devoted to a successful marriage in the kingdom. You, you, you learn what it means. I, I, by the way, if you're not married, I still respect him. That, that guy's cool. But the point of it is, is that you learn what it means to be in a, a, a pure, a pure righteous relationship where you have to become selfless. You've got to become humble. You know, when you're single, you, you really don't.
don't understand what it really means to be humble. To be selfless. I know you think you do. But talk to any married person and you will find out. And so, stop, stop dropping names, okay? That is what devotion is all about. I want, I want to give you a little quote here. It's pretty cool. It says, um, the great people of the earth today are the people who pray. I don't mean those who talk about prayer, nor those who say they believe in prayer, nor those who explain prayer, but I mean those who actually take the time to pray. They have not time. There's not a lot of time. It must be taken from something else. That something else is important. Very important and pressing, but still less important and pressing than prayer. There are people who put prayer first and group the other items in life's schedule around and after prayer. These are the people today who are doing the most for God in winning souls, in solving problems, in awakening churches, in supplying both men and money for mission posts, in keeping fresh and strong their lives far off, in sacrificial, sacrificial service on the foreign field where the thickest fighting is going on, and in keeping the old earth street a little while longer. Joan S.D. Gordon said that. That's probably one of the most cranky quotes I've ever read on prayer. And I think that's the way we got to see it as well. And that's where the second point, my last point tonight, goes from how prayer um, is, must be from devotion, but prayer is also got to focus on discipline, right? Prayer takes devotion, point one. Point two, prayer takes discipline. You with me here? Because there's a lot of pressing things in your life. When that alarm goes off in the morning, you have a decision. From the moment that alarm goes off, the first decision you make is to snooze. Or to get up. That is the discipline. Hang with me here. Hang with me here. That is the discipline. If you snooze, you lose. You lose time. Because time is the most important commodity you have. Talk to the person, talk, I mean, tell the person who has cancer who's dying. And they'll tell you, I wish I had more time. And of course, we take time for granted. And so, for us guys, discipline is the root of disciple. You can't be a disciple of Jesus and not be disciplined. And so, um, but at the same time, without devotion, it becomes nothing more than an empty ritual. You with me here? Yeah. And so that has no faith. That doesn't activate the power of God. Turn over to Mark chapter 1. You'll see what I mean here. Prayer takes discipline and prayer takes devotion. Come on, bro. Mark chapter 1. Come on, Andrew. Verse 35. Mark chapter 1. Verse 35. Around 9 o'clock in the morning, when the sun was up and things are going, Jesus got up. Now it says. What time did you get up this morning? Here's the deal. The Bible says here, very early in the morning. While it was still dark, Jesus got up. Okay, we, we can just stop right there. <laughs> Who here wants to be like Jesus? Raise your hand. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic here. For those of you who have jobs that you know work the you know midnight shift or whatever, I, just, I get it. I, I'm just trying to help you understand. Jesus was disciplined. Are you with me here? Yes. And so I was convicted when I read this because, I mean, how many times have we read this verse? But you know the challenging part is? You don't believe that it has an impact. 
You don't believe that if you get up earlier so you can spend more time with God, your day will be better. If you did, you would get up. Funny thing is, if you have, any, uh, if you have a job uh, appointment or whatever else, if someone told you, man, if you get up and meet me here at 6.30 in the morning, having had a quiet time, I will give you a million dollars. Every single one of y'all will be up at 4.30 in the morning. Probably the most amazing prayer of your life. Digging into like commentaries in the Bible, then all of a sudden, I mean, for, wash, you, man, you go up and run, and then you are ready to go. Why? Because you want that million dollars? Prayer takes discipline. Jesus was disciplined, guys. And it says here, he left the house, went off to a solitary place. Now, maybe some of you can't do that. That's why the Bible also says, hey, if you need to close the door and go hide in the closet or whatever and pray, do that too. The Bible gives other ways to pray. Okay? Bathroom, whatever else. But you need to have some time where you can just really connect with God. And it says, Simon and his companions went to look for him. So it wasn't like he went to pray and he's like, okay, I want to make sure everyone's get Okay, no, he went out, he had his time with God, so much so that other people went looking for him. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Have, have people ever thought you were lost because you went out praying? Yeah. And when they found him, because they knew where he was going, he had a place, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else in the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Why do we pray? We pray so that we're close to God, but we also pray so we can get ready to do God's will, to preach his word. We don't just sit around like, like other folks do in monasteries and separating themselves from the world. No, we're in the world. We're trying to preach to make disciples. Amen, guys? And sometimes you gotta get your heart ready to be able to preach. Sometimes you don't wanna preach. And so you gotta get your heart ready to do it. You gotta get your heart ready to share your faith in your job. God, give me courage today when I walk into that office. Help me to be a man of courage. Help me to be a woman of conviction. Help me not to be a coward today, to be unfaithful today, but to be a light at my job, to be a light at my campus. Are you praying until you get your heart there? Or do you think some McDonald's, okay, God, uh, yeah, pray with me today, uh, amen. You know, you get what you, you get what you pay for. You, you, get, you get what you pray for. That's it. And so, for me, just to confess to you guys, man, having two kids is not, a, not easy. You get up. You go to bed late and you go to be, you get up early. And I'm like, man, it was crazy because now we're overseeing three other churches with DC, Syracuse, and Boston. We got a church here in DC. We're trying to get ready for Johannesburg, South Africa. We're getting ready to move to LA. Um, New York, thank you. We're getting ready for Johannesburg. I'm like, this is intense. We're trying to get to go, try to go to Joe jo 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 Berg, God willing, end of April, early May. And so it was interesting because Patrick's been great. Both of us were really trying hard. But there are times I get up around 6.30 and I'm like, because I know as soon as I get up, I try to have my time with God, right? Isaiah wakes up around 7, goodbye, game over. And all you guys just look at each other and we're like, Amen. <laughs> because we've got to take care of the baby. Yeah. And so I've made the conviction that I'm getting up every morning at 5.30. Yeah. <laughs> and so while I was in LA, I got up every morning at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, Every morning. I went out, I prayed, I had a great time with God, I went out for my run, I came back and I was ready to go. Wow. See, the ministry, you didn't take your schedule. You got a lot of stuff to do, but you determine the time. Yeah. And if you're not disciplined, stuff will fall through the cracks. Yeah. See, when you go to work, your job tells you what to do at the time you need to do it. In the ministry, you got to make your time, and you got to make it happen. So you got to be more disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. Because no one's going to be like, hey, hey, it's 8 o'clock. Now, actually, with the interns, I, I'm going to have to start doing that. Oh. Oh. But, you know, hey, that's the way it needs to be. we got to be disciplined. And I was telling, you know, I think sometimes we allow our life to lead us instead of us leading our life. 
And so we're like, oh, I got this going on. And so instead of saying, okay, that means I got to get up earlier to have a proper quiet time, you just say, well, I'm going to get at the same time, but I, I can't have my quiet time because I have to do this early. See, you're letting your life compromise your time with God. Are you with me here, guys? How important is you? How important is it to you? Are you really devoted and are you really disciplined? Um, you know, take a look at Luke 5 here. We're going to close out. You know, this, this uh, in Luke 5, uh, this was an interesting scripture when I studied it out because I was like, wow, this is, with Jesus here, in Luke 5, starting in verse 15, actually, you can start in verse 12. It says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. So Jesus decided to go to them always and help every single one of them. That's not what the Bible says. What does Jesus do? He often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Does that surprise you? Jesus didn't go after the crowds. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. He didn't let the crowds dictate his relationship with God. Yeah. I think sometimes we allow our lives to go, oh, okay, if this is going on, this is going on, then I got to change. Jesus is like, you know what? You can wait. I'm going to have my time with God, and when I'm ready, I'm ready to serve you. Wow. I've seen a lot of ministers burn out because they try to be a Messiah to everybody. Yeah. You got to get yourself right. So you can go help your ministry. Mm. The reason why you get burned out is because you haven't taken time to get yourself right. Wow. And so there are times where the phone's ringing, and I'm like, mm -hmm, I'm going to get back to this guy, but I'm going to tend time with my God first. you got to be okay with that, because Jesus was okay with that. Yeah. You with me here, guys? And so you got to be disciplined and not be a people pleaser. You got to make sure you take care of yourself. Now, I'm not saying being selfish, but you do need to make sure that you're right. Otherwise, you can't help anybody else. So, how do we do this, guys? How do we get disciplined? Well, I told you. Remember, I told you about this whole thing from Daniel chapter 6, where Daniel prayed how many times a day? Three times a day. Three times a day, right? In the morning, and in the afternoon, and at night. And it was kind of cool to see, if you remember Acts chapter 3, verse 1, what do you see here? There was actually a time of prayer. You guys know that, right? Yeah. Turn over to Acts chapter 3. And we'll end here. In Acts chapter 3, there was a time of prayer for the Jewish people. I don't know if it was for the Jewish people, I think it was more for the Christians, to be honest, but the scholars debate it. In Acts chapter three, verse one, it says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. There was a time of prayer that people went to pray. Do you have a time of prayer in your life? And so what I do is I set my alarms, because I'm, I'm just, I gotta be disciplined. So I got my alarm set for 5.30, bing, 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 it goes off, right? But I also have my alarm set for 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. It reminds me to pray. I need discipline in my life. How about you? You with me here, guys? We gotta be disciplined with our bodies to keep ourselves trim. We gotta be disciplined for the Lord to keep ourselves sharp. You with me here, guys? And obviously, 3 p.m., Scholars believe the reason why they prayed for the Christians specifically is because that's the time Jesus died. He was on the cross from nine until three. Six hours. And so it's powerful there just to see, wow, these guys made time to pray. And I know for me, sometimes those midday prayers are the best ones. You know why? 
because you're in the thick of it. You know, in the morning, you're like, okay, God, amen, it's going to be a great day. Men of prayer, oh, Lord, Lord, I know you went to the cross. Okay, I will go to the cross, too. Help me through this trial. You see what I'm saying here? That three o'clock prayer, you know, see, you don't need a five-hour energy. If you just pray at 3 p.m., which is the time that they give the five-hour energy to people, because that's the time where people start falling asleep at their jobs, you'd be okay. Well, guys, uh, I close with this here. I close out with a quote. I really just hope that we will be devoted to prayer and realize how much prayer really is devotion, and it's all of, also about discipline. <laughs> but I wanted to close out with a, a quote here, and then I wanted to have uh, Quaker to share a little bit about what he took away from the conference. But I, I want to help remind, help you to remember how important prayer is. Because remember, Acts 6, 4 talks about being devoted or to a prayer and the ministry of the word, remember? Okay. It says here, this guy Samuel Chadwick says this, the one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. He fears nothing from prayerless studies, prayerless work, and prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. Brothers and sisters, Let's make 2014 a year of prayer as we glorify our God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much.